what is going on everybody today i'm going to be showing you how to replace leaking transmission lines for cheaper than going out and buying brand new lines and the way that we're going to be doing this is by cutting out the rusted section or the leaking section and replacing it with rubber hose and some hose clamps now this hose is rated for transmission oil cooler lines it can hold 400 psi so we're not going to blow apart this hose and I did make sure I get some beefy hose clamps to really clamp this on there. And the candidate that we're gonna be doing this on today is with this clapped out F-150. And this beast is literally as crusty as it gets. So if we can make this repair happen on this turd, I'm sure you can really do it on anything. I already cut one of the lines. This line here and this line here are our transmission cooler lines. And we are going to be cutting out and replacing a humongous section because it's all rotted in here. But I will crawl under here in a second and give you guys a visual and we will get started. The tranny lines in our beautiful Ford here can also be easily seen from the front. Right under here. And believe it or not, this was the line that wasn't leaking. very very crusty i already cut out the leaking line as i said and i'm going to be cutting this one out as well and replacing it with rubber because it's junk but another good point to note that by replacing these lines with rubber you don't have to worry about this happening they're never going to rust and a third good reason why i do this is that the odds are that everything is crusty in your rig if your lines look like that. And if you were to go and try to replace the complete brand new lines and put brand new lines in it and then try to disconnect the fittings at the radiator where they connect, you may break it and you may break your radiator and you don't wanna to have to replace your radiator. So by doing this with rubber, you're still keeping your lines there, you're just cutting them back and you avoid any damage. So this is the way to keep your rig going without making it a complete nightmare. We're getting ready to cut back some of the lines now. And we're going to be using this right angle die grinder with the cutoff wheel to get up in there. And this first line here that we already have out actually broke off inside the bracket here. They always rot and break inside the bracket because it traps moisture. So we are going to be cutting the lines a little bit farther back than that on the other side of all the steering and axle and stuff. Here are our two lines. As you can see, this is where they start to get nice with no rust. So we're gonna cut them back here. We're gonna make one shorter than the other just so it'll be a little bit easier for us to tighten, um, tighten the hose clamps down. But we're not gonna film this process of cutting because it's an extremely tight area and we need one person to um, hold the light and one person to freaking cut. So this is what they look like now and uh, I'll show you what they look like after we cut them. We got these cut. It went pretty smooth, just a little bit of training fluid in the face, nothing crazy. We decided to leave these the same length because they're a lot easier to work with and spread apart than we thought they were going to be. So these are ready now to have the rubber hoses slid over and we'll be good. The final cut that we have to make is right here. And this is definitely a tight area. So for this one, we're gonna try to use this hacksaw blade here, put some tape on. We already used this one to cut that hose, so we know it does make a nice cut. We'll just see how easy it'll be to work in there. Let's we'll see what happens. There she goes, finally. <laughs> it was fighting me so much. Nice.
Where are you, Mr. Lion? Can I grab it? There it is. There's our second big crusty line. Now that we removed all the crusty stuff, our next step is going to be to slide our new rubber hose over the transmission line that we left in the truck and clamp it down and our job should be done. It is the next day we have our first rubber hose all cut to length, installed, and clamped now. Came out really nice. And we are going to be moving on to our final hose in a moment. Going for two on here. I'm pretty sure this is the pressure line and you can stagger them so you got a good clamp here, a good clamp here. Really make sure she stays. There she goes. Now we'll clamp that down. We got this looking good. Over here, everything's also looking real nice. And we also tightened up all of our hose clamps back there as well. So these lines should be 100% done. And we are ready now to fire this beast up and see if anything leaks. Whenever you do a job like this, it is always a good idea to check the transmission fluid level before first startup. You don't have to get it completely accurate. As long as you have fluid in there, you'll be good. I don't think we leaked out a lot in this piece, but I'm gonna check it just to make sure. Yep, we didn't lose much at all. Good to go. We have the jump pack on, because of course it's dead. Let's do it. We just let her run for quite a while and there were no leaks at all. I'd love to take this thing for it's made and ripped today, but the last thing I have left to do is replace a brake line. 
But nonetheless, the transmission lines were the harder of the jobs. I'm glad we got those done. But I hope this video can help you out. Make sure to leave a like, a comment, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace!